For neutrons, gravity is like a staircase, not a slide. Indeed, neutrons fall in steps, bouncing off the last step and never quite reaching the bottom. The weird world of quantum mechanics, as described by Schrodinger and Heisenberg, requires it. And in 2002, this was demonstrated experimentally by a team of European physicists. Consider dropping a bouncy ball on a hard surface. Depending on how high you drop it from, it'll bounce to different heights. If you drop it just above the surface, it'll bounce only slightly, drop it from higher up, and it'll bounce much further. This continuous behavior is expected from classical Newtonian physics, but quantum mechanics dictates particles behave very differently. In quantum mechanics, particles are waves. Think of a plucked string. When confined between two points, only waves with certain specific wavelengths fit nicely, all the others disappear. And so for a single neutron dropped above a reflective mirror, gravity creates a potential barrier that confines it near the surface. Higher positions have higher gravitational potential energy, restricting how high the neutron can go. So the neutron's quantum wave function must fit precisely into this gravitational well, allowing only certain discrete energies and heights. The upshot of all of this theory is that the probability of finding a neutron at any given height above the mirror at any given time is essentially discrete. Certain specific heights are much more probable, and rarely will you find neutrons between those heights. And remarkably, the lowest allowed height is never at the mirror, it's slightly above it. In that regard, the neutron, paradoxically, floats. That all might sound fantastical, but this is science. We need to test it. We'd love to just pick up a neutron and drop it, but unfortunately, it's not that easy. Neutrons are small and hard to grab. Instead, we can send a slow horizontal beam of neutrons across a reflective mirror surface, and above it, place an absorbing barrier at adjustable heights. That way, if neutrons bounced too high, they'd be absorbed. By adjusting the absorber height, we could then selectively allow neutrons with lower quantum states to pass while removing neutrons occupying higher energy, and thus higher height, states. And this is precisely what the European team did. By adjusting the height of the absorber, they could compare the throughput of neutrons as predicted by the classical theory, which is continuous like a slide, to the quantum theory, where there are discrete jumps of allowable energy levels. If the quantum theory is true, when the height of the absorber is lower than the minimum allowed height, no neutrons will ever make it through. Furthermore, the amount of neutrons making it through should increase in steps with the height of the absorber, with each step corresponding to another allowed energy level. And of course, that's exactly what happened. Yes, science!